No further introductions. It is now time for question period. The Leader of Her Majesty's Royal Opposition. Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Premier. Since the Auditor General's report about the winter road maintenance contracts, the government has done nothing but brag about buying new equipment to prop up the failed agreements. The Minister of Transportation said they have supplied over 100 new pieces of equipment to clear the roads. Yet yesterday, his press secretary said the province never purchased any equipment for road maintenance contractors. Mr. Speaker, will the Premier clarify, did the government pay for the sanders and the plows, and how many did the government pay for? Thanks very much, Speaker. I want to thank the Leader of the Opposition for the question. I, uh, I've had the opportunity on a number of occasions over the last few months to speak here in the, uh, in the Legislature about this important uh, topic, Speaker. And of course, I believe the leader of that party would know that when the auditor produced her report a number of months ago, she had eight recommendations regarding how we can improve the uh, winter maintenance program that the ministry runs, Speaker. In addition to that, what I've pointed out repeatedly in this House is that prior to the auditor being called in, to conduct her investigation by the Standing Committee, there were, over the course of two winter seasons prior to that, Speaker, 105 pieces of equipment that were added to both Northern and Southern Ontario area maintenance contracts, Speaker. 105 pieces of equipment. So, for example, Speaker, in the north, yes, sir. in the north, that equipment helped with truck climbing and passing lanes, and in the south, that equipment helped. 50 or 55 pieces helped. With clearing Thank ramps you. and shoulders quicker, Speaker. I look forward to the fall. Thank you. Supplementary. Mr. Speaker, again to the Premier, but I can't seem to get an answer from the Minister of Transportation. On April 29th, the Minister tweeted 50, the number of additional winter maintenance vehicles added to Southern Ontario's roads since 2012. Another tweet 55, the number of additional winter maintenance vehicles added to Northern Ontario since 2012. A third tweet summed it up. MTO has added more than 100 pieces of snow clearing equipment since 2012. Mr. Speaker, where are those 105 pieces of equipment the minister claims MTO added? If the Ministry of Transportation and therefore the taxpayers paid for those specific pieces, why do we not own them? Why were they given away? Speaker, it's, uh, wow. it's a very, very. The member from the PM Carleton will come to order. And I'm waiting for silence so that I can hear the answer. Please. Speaker, again, I appreciate the question from, uh, from the Leader of the Opposition on this important topic. So I'm going to try to be as clear as I possibly can. In winter 2012 2013, the Minister the member of from Oxford, the member from Bruce Bay and Sounds. Contractors added 55 pieces of equipment, Speaker. In winter season 2013 14, we added another 50 pieces of equipment across the province of Ontario, Speaker. And in the year after, in the year since the Auditor General's report, we've added, I think it's in the neighbourhood of 37 plus 16, Speaker, so another 53 pieces of equipment that we've added. So in total, Speaker, from winter 2012-2013 until today, we've added 158 pieces of equipment across the province of Ontario, Speaker. Like all of the equipment that's deployed, both that which we've yes, added sir. since 2012 and that which, which existed in all of our area maintenance contractors, Speaker. Of course, we work with our contractors to make sure that Thank equipment you. is out on the roads and highways of the Thank you. Final supplementary. Mr. Speaker, uh, again to the Premier. Straight from the Auditor General's report, the total cost to the Ministry of Additional Units of Equipment negotiated with the contractors was $15 million a year. And again, I repeat, yesterday the government said they never purchased a new piece of equipment. This Liberal government has a history of not asking for receipts when they give away millions of dollars. Did the minister here do the same thing the Minister of Education did? Mr. Speaker, did the contractors give him receipts, pictures? Has he even seen the vehicles, or did the minister just hand over millions of dollars? What did you do? Thank you, Speaker. I you see it, please? Minister. 
Speaker, it's a little bit difficult for me to understand exactly what the Leader of the Opposition is trying to get at here. So, again, I'll be very clear. Going back over the last couple of years, Speaker, we have now added both prior to the auditor's report and since, we have now added cumulatively 158 pieces of equipment. Speaker, what happens, what happens with the way that our contracts are structured is that we effectively pay our contractors for service. They are required to fulfill their equipment complement to provide that service, which means that we pay a contract price to the contractor. They, in turn, purchase or lease the equipment itself to satisfy what's required. Speaker, there is nothing that should be confusing about this. But fundamentally, fundamentally, Speaker, fundamentally, Speaker, we are delivering. The member from Lanark, come to order. You have a wrap up, please. Just as I was saying, Speaker, 158 new pieces of equipment across all of Ontario since winter 2012-2013, which working with our contractors means that we'll continue to provide the winter maintenance program. Speaker, happy to have a conversation with Thank the leader you. offline if he wants a better understanding of why he's confused Thank about you. this topic. Thank you. New question, the leader of the opposition. Mr. Speaker, again to the Premier, since the Minister of Transportation won't answer a simple question. Right. The Auditor General was able to show us the government paid $1.7 million to buy 13 pieces of equipment for the lowest bidder on a $700,000 contract. We've now learned that four similar road maintenance contracts have failed. So the government spins this by denying they bought any new equipment, but then they say they gave money to these companies to buy new plows. If it wasn't a loan, grant or subsidy, it was simply trying to hide the government's failures. Mr. Speaker, will the government ask to be repaid for the equipment, or, or will the equipment be returned? You can't simply give the money away and see no proof for it. What will the government do? So, Mr. Speaker, I know that the Minister of Transportation will want to uh, once more answer the detailed question that the, uh, the Leader of the Opposition is asking, but, Mr. Speaker, at the base of this question should be a concern about keeping our roads in Ontario the safest in North America, which is what they are, Mr. Speaker, year after The member from Renfrew and Ipissing, Pembroke, come to order. Finish, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, year after year, our roads are among the safest in North America, at the top, first or second, Mr. Speaker, and the standards and the standards that we have in place, Mr. Speaker, are the highest possible. We work. The member from Renfrew, second time. Carry on. We work with the contractors, Mr. Speaker, and I would think that the Leader of the Opposition would want to see Answer. new equipment where it's necessary, would want to see that equipment deployed, Mr. Speaker, in order to keep those high standards in place. Thank you. Supplementary. Mr. Speaker, again to the Premier. In 2009, the Liberal government decided to switch the procurement process. Regardless of whether they had the equipment to do the job, the lowest bidder got the deal. Then the government would bail them out if they didn't have equipment. As a direct result of the switch, Ontarians' lives were put at risk. That's what this is about. In an effort to cover their tracks, the Liberals handed out millions of dollars worth of vehicles. Mr. Speaker, will the Liberals switch back to the PC model of contracting winter road maintenance before they have to bail out another company with taxpayer dollars? Minister of Transportation. Thanks very, much. Thanks very much, Speaker. I mean, the, the, the Premier, in her answer just a second ago, I think cited the statistic that's very important for everybody to remember. Over the last 13 years, Speaker, Ontario's roads and highways have ranked first or second across all North American jurisdictions for safety. Member from Kitchener, Waterloo. Prior to the Auditor General coming in to do her investigation, the Ministry of Transportation had already embarked on adding equipment and improving the winter maintenance program. And since the auditor released her recommendations. All eight of them, Speaker, have been accepted by the ministry. We continue to work with our contractors. We're adding equipment. We're improving service, and we're giving people the, the, uh, the from service Stormont, that they expect. From Thanks very much, Speaker. Thank you. Final supplementary. Mr. Speaker, again to the Premier, we don't need a snow job from the Ministry of Transportation. Under progressive Conservative standards, road clearing times were down to little over two hours. 
When the Liberal switch to the lowest bidder wins the contracts, road clearing times more than doubled. Right. In fact, six of the 20 contract areas didn't even meet the generous and lenient provincial standards. Right. In typical fashion, this government tried to throw money at their problem without a real solution. Well, I have a solution. Mr. Speaker, to the Premier, why won't the government return to the PC procurement model that kept roads clear and Ontarians safe? Thanks very much, uh, Speaker. Uh, it is regrettable, but I guess not surprising that the Leader of the Opposition would decide to spout off corny slogans and play a little bit of politics with an important issue. Speaker, what I've said consistently over the last number of months is that this Premier and this government, accepting all eight recommendations that were released by the auditor, are moving forward. We are deploying, in, co in conjunction with our contractors, more equipment. We have more liquid and materials out there on our highway, Speaker, and everybody is ready to take on the winter season that we find ourselves in right now, Speaker. And again, I would stress that over the last 13 years here in the prov province of Ontario, our roads and highways through all seasons, Speaker, have ranked first and second across North America here, here. for safety, Speaker. It doesn't mean that our work ends. It means that we keep working hard with our contractors, with our municipal partners, and all communities to make sure we deliver highway maintenance winter, fall, summer, and spring that the people of Ontario deserve. Thank you. Thanks very much, Speaker. Question the leader of the third party. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. My question is for the Premier. The Premier needs to come clean with Ontarians and tell them where the money from the sell-off of Hydro One is actually going. First, she said she's using that money for infrastructure. Now her fall economic statement says the government is using that money for a one-time improvement in the deficit numbers. Will the Premier and her government be breaking the promise that they made to Ontarians to build transit just so they can balance the budget, Speaker? Thank you. Well, Mr. Speaker. The leader of the third party knows full well that the money that we will realize as brought by broadening the ownership of Hydro One is being invested in transportation infrastructure, Mr. Speaker. She knows that. She knows that the projects that are being built around the province, Mr. Speaker, are critical to the communities in this province, and she knows that there is more that needs to be done. Whether it's roads, whether it's bridges in our northern and rural communities, whether it's wastewater systems, Mr. Speaker, or whether it is transit uh, projects, Mr. Speaker. And I will say to the leader of the third party. That that I would have thought, given that the Paris conference is going on right now, Mr. Speaker, and there is a global conversation about how to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, that she would have been supportive of the investment in transit infrastructure, Mr. Speaker, that will help us to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, will help us to develop innovative technology Answer. that we can export to the world so that we can, we can work to save this planet, Mr. Thank Speaker. Speaker, selling Hydro One is short-sighted. It doesn't build transit. It leaves people paying more. It puts the brakes on job creation in this province. The fall economic statement says, and I quote, the province's total revenue projection is $1.2 billion higher than in the 2015 budget forecast. This increase largely reflects the recent Hydro One initial public offering, end quote. But then the minister stood up in this legislature and said, quote, we are not relying on assets in order to manage our deficit. Well, Speaker, which is it? My question is simple. When this government continues to say one thing and do the other, how can Ontarians trust what they're saying about the sell-off of Hydro One? The Minister of Aboriginal Affairs will come to order. Mr. Premier. Speaker, we have been very clear that we were broadening the ownership of Hydro One as part of a plan to have the revenue to be able to invest in infrastructure, Mr. Speaker. We've been very clear about that. We ran on it, Mr. Speaker. It was part of our budget. We are now implementing that plan, Mr. Speaker. And we've been very, very clear that we understand the needs for investment in infrastructure across this province. Quite frankly, Mr. Speaker, the need for investment in infrastructure across the country. But Ontario has put forward a plan that will allow us to do our part. Mr. Speaker, I understand that the leader of the third party wants to, uh, wants to encourage people to make assumptions about hydro rates, about electricity rates that simply are not the case. The fact is the Ontario Energy Board that set rates now, sets rates now will set rates after the, uh, the uh, broadening of the ownership of Hydro One. She knows that, Mr. Speaker, and she knows we need those investments in infrastructure. Thank you. Final 
supplementary? Speaker, whether it's the more than half a billion dollars in debt retire retirement charges that didn't retire debt but instead just disappeared, or Hydro One dollars that the Liberals are counting once for infrastructure and a second time against the debt, I can't blame Ontarians for losing trust that this government has their best interests at heart. Will the Premier and her government take a step towards rebuilding the trust of Ontario's Ontarian Speaker and commit to not sell any more of Hydro One? Well, Mr. Speaker, I think the fact that the Trillium Trust exists, that the funds from the, uh, the broadening of the ownership of Hydro One will go into the Trillium Trust, and that that money will be invested in infrastructure, Mr. Speaker, is exactly the kind of transparency that we promised to the people of Ontario and we are delivering. But, Mr. Speaker, there are people in every community in this province, not just the municipal leaders, not just the elected officials, but the people living in communities who know that they need investment in the infrastructure in their communities. Communities. They know that the roads and the bridges and the transit in their community communities is inadequate, Mr. Speaker, and they know that they, in their municipalities, do not necessarily have the resources to make those investments. And so they look to the provincial government, they look to the federal government to work with their municipal leaders to make those investments. That's what we're doing, Mr. Speaker. Answer. And it has the it has the benefit. That kind of infrastructure investment has the benefit of reducing greenhouse gas emissions when we talk about transit. Thank you. And providing economic development in communities. The leader of the third party. Thank you, Speaker. My next question is also for the Premier. The Liberals insist that selling off Hydro One will painlessly pay for transit, but the independent FAO says it won't raise the money that the Liberals insist that it will. The FAO says that it will leave this province in worse shape than it is today, losing money that could be invested in health care and education and all kinds of other important programs. Can this Premier explain why this government thinks that the FAO is wrong? Well, Mr. Speaker, I know the Minister of Finance is going to want to comment on uh, on that report, but she, uh, the the, minister, the uh, member, the leader of the third party, Mr. Speaker, knows full well that the uh, the FAO said we were on track to uh, reduce our deficit, to eliminate our deficit, Mr. Speaker, and in fact didn't take into account the uh, the revenues from uh, the broadening of the ownership of Hydro One. So, Mr. Speaker, we are on track to eliminate the deficit by 2017-18. We are investing in infrastructure. There's building going on around the province. There will be more building, Mr. Speaker, because the needs are great. We are, uh, we are still catching up, Mr. Speaker, and we know that if we we don't make those investments, we will not be competitive. Our communities will not be competitive in an economy that is global, Mr. Speaker. So we're going to make those investments in order to make sure that Ontario is competitive as it can be on the global stage, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. Speaker, the Premier knows or ought to know that the FAO in fact said the opposite, and this province will be in worse financial shape in the long run. That's what the FAO said. And he said that selling off a revenue generating asset in order to pay for for transit is the worst way to fund infrastructure in the province of Ontario, Speaker. But yesterday, the Minister of Finance insisted that selling Hydro One would, quote, make more value for the province of Ontario. The FAO says, quote, the province's budget balance would be worse than it would have been without the sale. Can the Premier explain why people should believe the Liberals instead of the independent financial accountability officer for this province? Minister of Finance. Minister of Finance. So, Mr. Speaker, the FBO says the following, and I, he acknowledges that our plan to eliminate the deficit by 2017-18, he says, is achievable. And he goes on to say, in both 2013 and 2014 program spending was $1.2 billion lower each year than the original budget projection. He further states, and I quote, and as a result, it is reasonable to expect that our government will continue to manage program spending for 2015-16 below the original budget plan projection. He recognizes that the work that's being done, as well as optimizing our assets for reinvestment into our economy, will produce other revenues, and he recognizes that what we are doing now is achievable. He also states, by the way, that asset repurposing is not what's being dependent upon in terms of balancing the budget. He says that as well. Answer. So, Mr. Speaker, the member of the third party is wrong in her assessment. We are doing what's necessary to reinvest in our economy and Thank produce you. new assets. Thank you. Final supplement. Well, Speaker, this is not simply a game of cut and thrust in question period. It is about the people of Ontario, people who are worried. 
people who are worried about whether or not they're going to be able to have uh, their jobs going forward, worried about whether they're Deputy going to be able House to leader. pay their bills this year and what they're going to do each and every year that private shareholders push those bills up and up and up. Worried about whether they can trust anything that they actually hear from this government across the way, Speaker. Will the Minister Premier of Economic Development. show good faith to the people of this province, the people of Ontario, the 105, 85 municipalities who have told them to stop the sale-off, the 80 per cent of Ontarians that have said, stop the sell-off? The Chamber of Commerce, who's worried about the impact of the sell-off on business in this province, will she do the right Question. thing and stop the, any further sell-off of shares of Hydro One? Thank you. Mr. Mr. Speaker, let me, uh, let me be very clear. Ontario's unemployment rate is now down to 6.8 per cent, below the national average. It was this party that provided index to minimum wage, which that member opposite voted against. We I produced real jobs, Mr. Speaker, 560,000 real jobs, net new jobs since the recession. Furthermore, we are investing. We have investments concurrently underway. And the member opposite, I'm not sure what she would cancel. Is it the Hamilton LRT where she lives? Mr. Speaker, is it the Go Expansion in Kitchener where her opposition, where her partner, where the veteran lives? Mr. Speaker, is it the expansion from of, the Kitchener, Sudbury, Waterloo, second of the time. Sudbury region? Is it the high-speed rail from London to Windsor that's being proposed right now? Is it the realignment of Highway 7 in Kitchener and Guelph? Mr. Speaker, we need to understand what it is the member opposite would cancel if we don't do Answer. what we're doing to repurpose our assets and reinvest in the very projects that are necessary for our economy. Thank you. New question? The member from Leeds Grenville. Uh, thanks, uh, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Uh, Jerry Lahey Jr. is supposed to have another court date today in his role in the Sudbury by-election bribery scandal. I'm not going to ask about that because I don't need the government House Leader to tell me that he can't answer because it's before the courts. But there is so much more Remember from play. Beaches, East York. According to the Globe and Mail's Adrian Morrow, prosecutors agonized for months over whether to advise police to go ahead with charges against Pat Sorbera. It's not as clear as the government likes to make it out to be. Whether what Ms. Sorbera did was illegal, we may never know. But we certainly Deputy House Leader, it was second time. and immoral. So, Mr. Speaker, I was just wondering how hard it was for the Premier to disregard her integrity by supporting Sorbera and the alleged bribery. Excellent question. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I know that the, uh, the member opposite. Uh, understands that I have answered many, many questions on this uh, subject in the House, outside of the House, Mr. Speaker. He also knows that there is a, a case before the courts, Mr. Speaker, and I have, uh, I have no further comment to make. Supplementary. Speaker, again to the Premier, Jerry Lawhe Jr. is still on trial. I know it's before the courts. Pat Sorbera is still under investigation for violations of the Election Act. I know it's an ongoing investigation. We've talked about those things endlessly. But something we don't talk often enough about is what happened on February 20th. That's the day the Premier marched into this building and threatened the opposition. She tried to silence us by accusing both parties of quid pro quo arrangements and trading seats for jobs. But we didn't waver because someone in this bill. Stop the clock. Order. The members will come to order. You won't know when I'm going to hit. Please finish. Again, Speaker, that didn't waver us because someone in this building has to have some integrity. Thank God. That being said, Speaker, what is the Premier more embarrassed about? Trying to intimidate the opposition to drop the issue, her deputy chief of staff still being under investigation, or the fact that a senior Liberal Question. operative is in court today on corruption charges? Seated, please. Thank you. Premier. Yep. Seated. Well, Speaker, you know I've noticed uh, I've noticed a trend when uh, when the opposition always decides to talk about uh, things that should not be discussed in this legislature is when they have Speaker nothing to talk about. Instead of Speaker talking about climate change and how we're going to fight climate change, instead of talking about Speaker by building public infrastructure, especially public transit across the province, they choose to speak about issues.
Finish, please. Speaker, clearly when they have nothing substantive to talk about issues that are important to the people of the province, they choose to, to talk about issues that are before the course, which they know that they... The uh, member from Nipissing, the member from Leeds Grenville, and the member are, are, are uh, come to order, and the member from Nipi and Carleton second time. Finish, please. Speaker, they continue to talk about issues that are not uh, that are really does not advance the the, uh, the the progress the in our Duffin province Caledon. by ensuring that we we tackle the issues around climate change by ensuring that we are building Ontario up by investing in our in our communities because speaker they have no concrete no positive ideas the whatsoever so they focus on what speaker. The member from Leeds Grenville second time. The member from Stormont Dundas and South Glengarry. You're warned. Carry on. Speaker, it's unfortunate that the, uh, the official opposition Answer. continues to focus on issues that are within the purview of the court and not, should not be discussed Thank in the you. legislature and focusing on things that matter strongly. Thank you. New question. The member from Toronto, Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. My question to the Premier. First, we learned that Ontario families were subsidizing the Hydro One IPO to the tune of three million bucks. The fall economic statement showed that the public subsidy for the sell-off has ballooned to $63 million. How much more will Ontario families have to pay because of this government's short-sighted decision? How much more? Thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. Speaker, you know, I, I didn't expect that the, uh, the official opposition, the PCs, would ask a question about climate change, Mr. Speaker, because even though the leader of the opposition says that he got into politics because he has a social conscience, Mr. Speaker, I, I didn't expect that, Mr. Speaker, but I did expect that somewhere in the lead-off question or in the first three questions that the NDP might ask a question about climate change, Mr. Speaker. Crisis. There's a very important conference going on in crisis. Paris right now. People from around the world, leaders from around the world, are there to try to forge an agreement that is going to allow this planet, is going to allow the jurisdictions in this planet to work together to make sure that we don't increase the uh, the temperatures on this planet above two percent and two degrees increase, Mr. Speaker. But there is no question coming from the NDP, Answer. shockingly, Mr. Speaker, given that they purport they purport to have a conscience about things environmental. Mr. Speaker. The member from Leeds Grenville, second time. The member from Renfrew Nepissing Pembroke is warned. One sentence. In fact, Mr. Speaker, the, uh, the assumption underlying the questions that the NDP are asking that we shouldn't be investing in infrastructure actually work Thank against you. the reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. Mr. Thank you. Stop the clock. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Supplementary. <laughs> Speaker. I have to say that the use of the issue of climate change as a shield for this disgusting action on the government's part is reprehensible. Speaker, Minister of Aboriginal Affairs. The Premier's powerful time. friends are getting all the benefits from the Hydro One sell off. But we are paying the bills. There's a question of fairness about who gets the benefits and who pays the costs. Because on top of the $63 million that we're paying to subsidize the IPO, Ontario is going to lose $500 million a year from that sell off. $500 million a year. Last year alone, Ontario received about $750 million from Hydro One. Question. Now we're giving it up. On top of this losing steady revenues, how much more will Ontarians be paying to subsidize the sell-off if the government sells the rest? Thank you. Mr. Speaker, the, lead, the, member, 
The member of the third party knows that the uh, costs are being recovered through the IPO, Mr. Speaker. He knows that the way uh, that uh, that rates are set now, it's the way that rates will be set at the conclusion of this. But, Mr. Speaker, I would suggest to the people of Ontario that, in fact, this member, who is a self-proclaimed environmentalist, Mr. Speaker, yes, that he is actually using the discussion about Hydro One as a shield, as a shield against the fact that the NDP has no interest in talking about climate change, has no interest in talking about the future of this planet, and has no plan, Mr. Speaker, to deal with those realities. Order. Order, please. Uh, you're, you're risking a warning. New question. The member from Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Our government has a strong record of supporting Ontario's 444 municipalities. We believe it's important to have a strong working relationship with our municipal partners. That's why when we came into power, we reversed the costly— The member from Timmins, James Bay, come to order. Finish, please. That's why when we came into power, we reversed the costly downloads to municipalities by the former PC government. As a result of the combination of provincial uploads and other supports, Ontario municipalities are receiving a combined benefit of more than $3.7 billion in 2015 alone. Recently, there's been speculation about whether our government will be giving municipalities the option to put forward a municipal land transfer tax, which is currently only active in Toronto. Speaker, there's been lots of confusion and misinformation on this matter. It's one Ontarians feel strongly about. Through you, would the minister please provide some clarity on Question. the province's position on expanding land transfer tax powers to other municipalities? Well, I sure will, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank you and thank the honourable member from Cambridge, uh, a great MPP. Uh, Premier, the province has a strong record, as the member noted, of supporting and working with municipalities to ensure that they're able to provide the services that their communities need. Uh, we consulted with a wide range of stakeholders during our Municipal Act review period that ended October 31st. We are currently reviewing that feedback and can tell you there has been no call at all for a municipal land transfer tax, nor is there any legislation before the House that would allow this, nor has it been our intent, based on our extensive consultation, to introduce legislation to put in place a Answer. municipal land transfer tax. Let me be clear. There will be no extension of the ability to have a land transfer tax Thank to you. any municipality. Of Attention. I find that this place could use a little uh, reminder uh, that the debates tend to escalate when we do not do the rules or follow the protocols that we've got in place that are very useful. 
and the one I will remind you of, and I will probably start ramping up my expectation of all the members, is that you do not call members by anything else other than their title or their writing. And I don't need editorials. We can elevate this together, or if you want me to do it, it will not be joyous. <coughs> Supplementary. Thank you to the minister for this answer and his thoughtful consideration of this issue. I know my constituents in Cambridge and North Dumfries and consistent constituents across Ontario will be pleased to hear we will not be expanding the land transfer tax powers to other municipalities to reflect what we heard during the review of the Municipal Act. With that being said, I know that local governments have the closest relationship to the people in their communities. They provide, provide frontline services like public transportation, garbage collection and recycling, and recreational facilities. All Ontarians want strong, vibrant communities where they can live, work and raise families. I know that during the review of the Municipal Act, you travelled across Ontario and met with municipalities to discuss a variety Question. of issues. Speaker, through you, will the minister please share with this House what issues were discussed as part of the review of the Municipal Act? Thank you. Minister. Well, Speaker, now that I've been absolutely clear about land transfer tax, I'm delighted to answer the sec second part of the question. When we consulted with municipalities, uh, we asked uh, specifically whether there was sufficient accountability and transparency in their actions, whether municipalities have the powers and tools to deliver services effectively, like transit and waste diversion, and what barriers municipalities face to achieving financial stability. These are all important issues that our government takes very seriously, Absolutely. as do our municipal partners. Our government speaker is already taking action to help municipalities receive more money to pay for transit services and waste diversion with the proposed Smart Growth for Our Communities Act, known as Bill 73. If passed, this important piece Answer. of legislation will help communities grow and pay for the important public services Here that they are. deliver to their people every Thank single you. day. No questions. Member from Carleton, Mississippi Mills. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry. We are all shocked by the bad news from Hornpain, where, where Havel's Rood Sawmill has announced they will be shutting down and laying off all 200 employees because they have not been able to secure a contract from the Ontario government for their cogeneration plant. These layoffs will have a devastating effect on the town of Hornpain because they represent 50% of the total employment in the community, and it comes just before Christmas. Forestry is the second largest industry in Ontario. The industry suffered a massive downturn in 2008, resulting in a loss of 50% of the forestry jobs in Question. Ontario. Recently, there has been an increase in demand for wood products, which represents hope for a turnaround in the industry. This bad news Thank you. could be the straw that breaks the camel's back in horn pain. Mr. Speaker, what will the Minister Thank you. Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. I want to thank the member for the question, and I know that the Minister of Energy will want to wade in on this, and I'll refer the supplementary to him. Uh, the member is right that forestry suffered a significant downturn, 05, 06, and in fact, the downturn suffered by this particular industry was a precursor to the greater recession that came in 2008. Speaker, I would remind this member and all members in the House, it was because of that downturn in 05, 06 that this government put in place an incredibly broad base of support programs for this particular industry. In fact, the broad base of supports and programs we put in place totaled somewhere in the order of magnitude of $1.3 billion. Speaker, I can tell you that even with this particular partner in the industry, we provided specific su supports of a very significant nature to, the, uh, nature to this particular industry. Answer. We continue to work with them on this. We're aware of the issue, and as I've said earlier, Speaker, I know that the Minister of Energy will add some more information on this particular situation in the supplementary. Thank you. Supplementary, the member from Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. 
Thank you very much, Speaker. It is the energy policies of this government that have precipitated the problems in Horn Payne as they have in other communities all across northern Ontario and all across Ontario. And until you make the changes, and I ask the Minister of Natural Resources to stand with your cabinet colleague and fight for jobs in the north by getting your cabinet to reverse the disastrous energy policies that have sent Order. prices through the roof. That is why this company hoped to mitigate some of the damage by selling some electricity back to the province. Now you've shut them off on that. Will you stand today and say, I'm in favour of keeping jobs in the north and talk to your energy minister to reverse these disastrous policies? Excellent. Can you see it, please? Minister of Natural Resources. Could I want to compliment the Minister of Energy, Mount 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 uh, who has made representations in a professional way, Mr. Speaker. We've had an ongoing dialogue. He has shown tremendous concern for this issue, Mr. Speaker. We are working towards a solution, Mr. Speaker. But the bottom line is, Mr. Speaker, that the power purchase contract, which the operator has in hand right now, is not economically viable, Mr. Speaker. They're asking for a higher purchase price, Mr. Speaker, which will put pressure on prices. Notwithstanding that, Mr. Speaker, we're asking all of the participants who are engaged and impacted on this to try to come up with a solution, Mr. Speaker. We are uh, mildly optimistic that we can come up with a solution. Mr. Speaker, but in terms of ad Wayne advocacy from the opposition, rather than yelling and screaming as we just heard, I want to compliment the member for the effort that he's made in working with us towards a solution. There are people that have been warned in this house. New question, the member from Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question today is the Minister of Transportation. Minister, in the Internal General's scathing report of your privatized winter maintenance contracts, we learned that your government spent millions of dollars to buy equipment for companies you had awarded contracts to, like the Angelo Brothers in Sudbury. Now those contracts are failing. So, Minister, my question for you is a simple one. What will happen to the equipment your government spent millions of dollars to purchase now that those contracts have been cancelled. No, no, keep it going. Um, I would uh, remind the member that uh, props are not allowed to be used in the House. If it happens again, it'll be taken. Thanks uh, very much, Speaker, and I thank the member from Niagara Falls for the question. I uh, tried to explain this earlier to the official opposition. So. Uh, in the case of, uh, for example, the Kenora contract, which, uh, uh, which both uh, the government of Ontario and Transfield, the former contractor that had responsibility for the Kenora contract, as an example, Speaker, uh, when both parties mutually agreed a number of months ago to end the contract uh, in, uh, in question, Speaker, uh, we, we then went out to procurement and awarded that contract area for this winter season to another company that is in the Kenora area that actually has more pieces of equipment. Uh, out uh, being deployed over the course of uh, this winter season uh, versus what took place last winter season, Speaker. The way that our area maintenance contracts work with, with, uh, with, um, uh, with regard to, to the pieces of equipment, Speaker, is that the government of Ontario is actually purchasing a service from the contractors, not individual pieces of equipment. We don't buy Answer. the equipment. The contractor purchases or leases the equipment, and we pay for the service that that equipment will provide to the people, in this case of Kenora or in the case of Sudbury Speaker. The Thank contractor you. is required to provide the service. Thank you. Supplementary. The concern, Mr. Speaker, was last year you awarded the contracts to companies that didn't have the equipment to provide the safety that the residents of a terror should have had last year. People were injured and died on our roads in the province of Ontario. Mr. Speaker, Minister, you can talk all you want about following the recommendations of the Auditor General's report, but the fact of the matter is this. Your government awarded winter maintenance contracts to companies who didn't have the proper equipment and not only had the residents of Ontario drive on unsafe, unsafe roads last winter. And Ontario continues to pay that price. So, Minister, I will ask you again, who will own the equipment that the people of Ontario spent millions of our hard-earned dollars to purchase now that these contracts have been cancelled? Minister. 
So again, Speaker, I thank the member from Niagara Falls for his question. Again, there seems to be a little bit of confusion with respect to how the contracts work, Speaker. Whether whether Order. we're talking about the existing ongoing contracts or we're talking about additional equipment that's brought to bear. So just to be clear on that, Speaker, since 2012-2013, 158 pieces of additional equipment have been deployed Remember from Kitchener, across the province Colorado. of Ontario. Whether we're talking about the existing contracts or the additives, the additions on top of those contracts for equipment, Speaker, the contractors purchase or lease the equipment. We pay them for the service that that equipment will deliver, Speaker. And in each of the cases, again, we followed all eight of the auditor's recommendations. We have, since 2012-2013, deployed with our contractors 158 Answer. additional pieces of equipment. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. New question. The member from Barrie. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Research and Innovation. Minister, millions of people around the world continue to suffer from an inadequate supply of clean and safe water. According to the World Health Organization, almost one in one billion people around the world lack access to an improved supply of clean water. And more than 50 countries continue to report cases of cholera and other diseases as the result of dangerous contaminants and pollutants in their drinking water. That is why it is imperative that our government continues to make investments in water technology that will ensure people have access to clean and safe water. Minister, can you inform the members of the House on how our government is supporting Ontario companies uh, commercialized technologies that will have a meaningful impact for people all around Thank the world? Thank you. <laughs> Minister of Research and Innovation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the member from Barrie for that very good question, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, our government recognizes the importance of investing in clean water technologies that will benefit both the people of Ontario and the people around the globe, Mr. Speaker. That's why investing in water technologies is a core pillar of Ontario's innovation agenda and a key area of strategic focus and investments. Mr. Speaker, with 22,000 people working in 900 companies across the province of Ontario, I am proud to say that Ontario has emerged as a global leader in water technologies in the world. Since 2003, Mr. Speaker, our government has committed nearly $50 million in funding to more than 100 water-related projects that will benefit people around the world. Mr. Speaker, my ministry will continue to support the development and yes, commercialization of new and innovative water technologies through research and commercial commercialization funding. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the minister for that answer. It is reassuring to know that our government recognizes the social and economic benefits of investing in water technologies. I understand that the global market for water technologies is estimated to be $557 billion and doubling to a trillion in 2020. I often hear about the positive impact that Ontario's water tech companies are having around the world thanks to the investments that have been made by our government. Minister, I know that Ontario has led a number of successful international missions that have helped create new partnerships with other jurisdictions who are leaders in the water sector. Minister, can you inform the members of the House on how our government is growing Ontario's water sector through these investments Question. and international mi missions? Thank you. Minister. Mr. Speaker, again, I want to thank the member for that very good question. Mr. Speaker, through Ontario's water sector uh, strategy, our government is taking the necessary steps to ensure that Ontario remains a globally recognized leader for water technologies. That's why my ministry has invested $6.5 million in WaterTap, an organization that is helping grow globally competitive companies and has emerged as Ontario's water champion. Just recently, Mr. Speaker, the Premier was in California to promote the innovative solutions that Ontario com companies can offer to tackle the ongoing water issues in California. Our government has also signed a, an MOU with Jiangsu Province of China on clean water technologies. Mr. Speaker, my ministry will continue investing in innovative technologies that will give Ontario companies a competitive edge in the global water yes, sector. Sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. New question. The member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Yeah, thanks, uh, Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Transportation. 
Over the last few months, we've seen a rash of tragic, fatal accidents involving trucks that continue to raise concerns over this minister's commitment to public safety on Ontario roads. Today's Toronto Star report indicating that would-be truckers are heading out of the GTA traffic to easy pass testing facilities for their licenses only heightens those concerns. Given the tragic toll that trucking accidents have had on our roads, it's the minister's responsibility to ensure truckers are tested to standards that meet Ontario highway traffic demands. Speaker, can the minister tell us why so many GTA truck drivers who will be driving in the GTA are getting their licenses in Bancroft and Clinton? Thank you, minister of Transportation. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Speaker. I thank the member for his question. Of course, he knows, everyone here knows, I say this repeatedly, uh, that ensuring roads and highways here in the province of Ontario remain safe for all road users uh, is perhaps my top priority, certainly one of my most important priorities, Speaker. And again, I said this earlier today, for the last 13 years, ranked first or second in North America, that's the province of Ontario. Having said that, Speaker, having said that, the work at the Ministry of Transportation in terms of making sure we deliver that outcome for the people of Ontario doesn't stop at any point in time. It's why a number of months ago, Speaker, I made a commitment on behalf of the government that we would introduce mandatory entry-level training for AZ drivers. Speaker, that's a project that we continue to work on with the Ministry of Training, Colleges and Universities, and I anticipate that we'll begin to roll out that program in summer 2016. We will also take a look at the issue that's being raised in the Toronto Star today, Speaker, and I look forward to working Answer. with that member and members on all sides of this House to make sure that we continue to enhance our road and highway safety. Thank you. Supplementary. Yes, uh, back to the minister. Speaker, over a year ago, this minister promised us he would do something about unprepared truckers being licensed to drive on our roads. That was after it was revealed that provincial truck testing facilities weren't even taking potential truckers onto the 400 series of highways as they were mandated to do. Today, we learn not only are truckers not learning on the 400 series, they're earning licenses on traffic light rule roads. It's been over a year, and this minister fails to get the urgency of the need to have properly tested truckers mm -hmm. on our major provincial highways. Speaker, will the minister tell us when he will finally begin to take these very real issues of public safety on Ontario roads seriously? Good question. Thank you, Minister. Thanks, uh, thanks very much, Speaker. I thank the member for the follow-up question. He knows, as well as everyone else in this House knows, Speaker, that everyone on this side of the legislature takes these issues very seriously. I mentioned just a moment ago in my initial answer, Speaker, that we will roll out working closely with the Ministry of Training, Colleges and Universities, mandatory entry-level training for AZ licensees for potential licensees, truck drivers, Speaker, by summer of next year, uh, and we'll continue to work with everybody who provides uh, in this particular realm. Speaker, I should point out, in addition to the fact that over the last 13 years, Ontario has ranked first or second across North America for highway safety, generally speaking, Speaker, on the issue of truck drivers specifically, since 1993, there has been a 79 per cent increase in the number of large trucks used in Ontario, and in that same period of time, Speaker, there's been a reduction of 50 per cent of the number of large truck fatalities that have taken place in the province of Ontario. It doesn't mean, Speaker, that our work ends, Answer. but it means that the track record that we have is strong, and we will continue to build on that going forward. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Good question. The member from Hamilton Mountain. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Speaker, one month ago, we learned there, there are almost 16,000 kids waiting for essential ABA, IBI therapies in Ontario. The Premier and her government have had a month to take action to help families and kids who are languishing on the wait list. In fact, when the Premier was running for the Liberal leadership, she said, and I'll quote, every Ontarian with autism deserves our support and has mine, end of quote. Speaker, families and kids with autism are reaching out to me and telling me that they feel hopeless and certainly don't have this government's support. Families are being forced to remortgage their home. They're moving to other provinces just to get their support that their children need. Speaker, will the Premier commit today to immediately ending the chronic wait list for ABA, IBI therapies? Question. In Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Minister of Children and Youth Services. Thank you, Speaker. And I want to thank the member for this very important question. We know that the prevalence of autism is increasing, Speaker, in Ontario. It's gone from one in 100 children to one in 68 today. And that's why, Speaker, we've been increasing our investments in autism services to $190 million annually. And uh, we know that more has to be done. I, as Minister of Children, Youth, am equally concerned about wait lists. However, it is important to note, while kids are on wait lists, there are supports available. There's a range of services, whether it's speech and language, rehab services, respite services, mental health services. Uh, we continue to support families, and uh, we know there's more to be done, and I'll be pleased to speak further about it in the supplementary. Answer. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I'd like to go back to the Premier again. Speaker, on on my desk today, I have letters from the DeMambro family in my community of Hamilton and from the Onofrio uh, family in Whitby that are directed at the Premier. These letters are heart-wrenching. In the words of one parent with a verbal, non-verbal child with autism, she said, by denying my son therapy, you are taking away his voice, his only way to communicate with a world that is different from him. End of quote. The Premier must acknowledge her failure on this file. Speaker, this government should not be balancing the books of, on the backs of families and children with ASD. Speaker, will the Premier commit to responding personally to each of these letters that I'm going to deliver to her from parents and kids with ASD? Question, Minister. Thank you, Speaker. And you know, I think it's important to acknowledge that probably many of us in this legislature have received letters from families who have children who are experiencing autism. And we all do our best to respond to that and, and support these kids as we go forward. I want to assure the member opposite and actually correct something she said earlier. I want to assure this House that the number of children receiving IBI and ABA has increased in the last two years, it has not decreased. The total number of children receiving IBI has increased by 4.5 percent. I know we need to do more, Speaker. And the number of children receiving ABA has increased. These are the correct numbers, Speaker, and uh, it's very important that we frame these numbers properly, not using point-in-time data that the third party has used. Speaker, we'll continue to provide more services for children with autism. That's my priority. I'm looking forward to bringing uh, more to this House on the autism Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Economic Development, Employment and Infrastructure. Too many critics have been talking down our manufacturing sector. Yet the reality is manufacturing has been growing steadily since the recession in Ontario. And with good reason, Mr. Speaker, as manufacturing firms count on our skilled workforce, climate of innovation, and our streamlined business environment to encourage global trade. Now, Ontario is one of the global leaders in advanced manufacturing. Yes, we are. Perhaps these and the advanced manufacturing program at Sheldon College in my riding, which is a state-of-the-art advanced manufacturing program, are helping. Mr. Speaker, through you to the minister, what else is our government doing to Question. support interior manufacturers in this precarious global situation? Minister of Economic Development, Employment and Infrastructure. Please. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. What a timely question, considering the Canadian manufacturers and exporters are here in the legislature today. Jason Myers, President, and Ian Hawcroft, VP Ontario, are in the, in the building and will be meeting with members and will be having a reception later on. And I think, Mr. Speaker, what they would tell us today in this legislature is manufacturing has continued to grow since the global recession, that we've got to stop talking down manufacturing and start talking it up because they're growing in Ontario and they're making exciting strides. Mr. Speaker, this government is working in partnership with our manufacturing sector. Our accelerated capital cost allowance is incenting them to reinvest in their plants, reinvest in their equipment, saving them a, a, to the tune of $290 million, Mr. Speaker, which is providing with the incentive they need to do that. And We're sir? also participating in partnerships when it comes to business support programs. And Mr. Speaker, my time's running out. I'll respond to that more in the supplementary. Thank you. Supplementary. 
Thank you, Minister, for that answer. Mr. Speaker, the Minister is absolutely right. Ontario is uniquely positioned to take advantage of the future of manufacturing due to our ICT strengths. But our strengths lie beyond what the Minister has already mentioned. For example, Ontario is among the top jurisdictions for vehicle production in North America. In 2014, Ontario produced more vehicles than any other subnational jurisdiction in North America, sporting hundreds of thousands of jobs across the province. Also, our manufacturers are benefiting from a very successful recent trip to China by the Minister, the Premier, and other members of this legislature. Minister, can you tell us what are the other ways by Question. which we are ensuring our manufacturers remain globally competitive? Thank you. Minister. Well, Mr. Speaker, there are so many areas that I could dive into to respond to that question. But let me start with the Premier's recent trip to China, Mr. Speaker. That trip alone generated $2.5 billion in trade deals and ex expecting about 1,700 jobs that are going to emerge from that. Many of those, Mr. Speaker, are in manufacturing. Prior to that, I was in Japan with Ray Tange, our special advisor on, uh, on auto. Mr. Speaker, we met with many auto and, and aerospace companies, over 25 of them, talking to them about the competitiveness and growth and ingenuity and innovation happening here in Ontario. Mr. Speaker, we are becoming a global leader in advanced manufacturing. We're becoming the place where manufacturers come to test their products, to develop their first generation products. This province is growing. We have a proud manufacturing base, Mr. Speaker. It's back in growth mode. Yes, sir. It's something all Ontarians can take pride in, and we're proud of a government to work in partnership with that very important sector. Thank you. Question, the member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, my question is the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. Mr. Speaker, we learned yesterday in committee the Ministry of Health had failed to consult with many stakeholders regarding Bill 122, the Mental Health Statute Law Amendment. The Ministry failed to consult with the Ontario Medical Association, the Coalition of Ontario Psychiatrists, the Registered Nursing Association, Legal Aid, Canadian Civil Liberties Association, and the Centre for Addiction and Mental Health during the creation of this bill. Each and every one of these groups represents individuals to be affected by the change in this bill. In fact, the ministry didn't even open up discussions with these groups until after second reading. Mr. Speaker, has the government been in power so long that they feel they no longer have to consult with Ontarians? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate the question uh, from the member opposite. And I think the uh, member appreciates that due to the, the narrow scope of the amendments uh, being proposed in the legislation that is currently before committee, uh, that's in fact the amendments are the result of a court decision uh, here in Ontario that uh, made some or asked uh, for some changes to be made to the legislation. I would hope that the uh, member opposite would agree that large, significant consultations that we normally undertake are not required. However, that being said, we did consult with many, many groups in the process of developing these proposed amendments, which are still before committee. And uh, I'd be happy to speak to some of those uh, entities that we did consult with appropriately, despite the narrow focus and the court order that resulted in these changes, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, Speaker. Actually, Mr. Speaker, the ministry spoke to maybe four or five groups and spoke to nobody between April and September. Oh. However, this, this uh, flawed policy process this government has created is due, in fact, that they're not following any process whatsoever. For instance, this is not the fir first instance of not consulting with key stakeholders. Just last week, the ministry announced that medical marijuana users were allowed to smoke or vape anywhere in Ontario, yet 24 hours later, they pulled a 180 and uh, ex pulled back the exemption because they listened to the media, they listened to the public, and even the Premier was against their uh, regulation. This government made the exemption without any consultation whatsoever. Mr. Speaker, it seems that the government isn't interested in hearing what Ontarians have to Question. say anymore. Mr. Speaker, has the government forgotten who they represent? Well, not at all, Mr. Speaker. And again, given the uh, decision by the Ontario Court of Appeals and the narrow uh, scope of that decision with reference to the Act itself, my ministry, in partnership with the Ministry of, of the Attorney General, have reviewed the Act and consulted with stakeholders. And uh, among the groups that we have consulted with, uh, who would be directly affected, because we're just talking about involuntarily detained uh, inpatients in psychiatric facilities, but we've uh, consulted with the consent and capacity. 
Capacity Board, the Mental Health Leadership Advisory Council, the Psychiatrists in Chief from uh, CAMH, from Waypoint, from Royal Ottawa and Ontario Shores facilities, uh, with the Ontario Hospital Association and a number of others. So we have uh, done the appropriate thing here. We've consulted widely, yes, despite the narrow framework, the narrow context of the amendments in question, Mr. Speaker. The member from London West on a point of order. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to welcome three guests who have joined us this morning. Uh, Dr. Katrina Scott, Canada Research Chair in Family Violence Prevention and Intervention at the University of Toronto, Tom Wolfe, Executive Director at Hiatus House in Windsor, and Harmi Mendoza, Executive Director of Woman Abuse Council of Toronto, also known as Woman Act. Welcome. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to uh, correct the record uh, in answer to a question this morning. I referred to the member from Algoma, Manitoulin. I would like to correct the record to read the member from, Man from uh, Algoma, Manitoulin, the member from Sudbury, and the Minister uh, of Northern Development. Thank you. The member from Timmins James Bay and a part of work. Well, Mr. Speaker, I do have a point of order in regards to the question period today. And as you know, during question period, we're not allowed to raise points of order. We have to wait till after, so I'm doing it now. Earlier, uh, the Minister of Municipal Affairs made what was essentially a government announcement in the middle of question period. We do know that there is a convention in this place that, in fact, that doesn't happen, that ministerial statements are used to make those type of announcements, because otherwise what ends up happening is the opposition doesn't get an opportunity to be able to respond. And I would ask you to rule on this, because, in fact, that was a ministerial statement. It was not a question. Thank you. I suspected. Um, I, I'm, I'm not, as the Speaker, I'm not in a position to make a judgment on whether or not it is a, an announcement of policy or not policy, but it has happened in the past where there have been um, obvious announcements that are being made in the answer to a question, and in that it is a more appropriate place for it to be uh, given during ministerial statements or in any other forum in the House that's more appropriate other than a simple question. So I would leave it at that to uh, uh, advise all members that when uh, making any policy statement, there's another place for it other than question period. We have a deferred vote on the motion of second reading of Bill uh, 144, an act to uh, implement budget measures and an act to amend certain other statutes. Call in the members. This will be a five-minute bill.
All members, please take your seats. On November the 23rd, 2015, Mr. Souza moved second reading of Bill 144. All those in favor of the motion, please rise one at a time be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Souza. Mr. Souza. Mr. Mr. Nackby. Mr. Nackby. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Madame Mayor. Madame Mayor. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Hoskins. Ms. Sandals. Ms. Sandals. Mr. Dugan. Mr. Dugan. Ms. McCharles. Ms. McCharles. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Mr. Takar. Mr. Takar. Mr. Berardinetti. Mr. Berardinetti. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Orzetti. Mr. Orzetti. Mr. Gravel. Mr. Gravel. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Leal. Mr. Leal. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Zimmer. Mr. Zimmer. Madame Lalonde. Madame Lalonde. Mr. Quadri. Mr. Quadri. Mr. Balkison. Mr. Balkison. Ms. Albanese. Ms. Albanese. Mr. Manga. Ms. Manga. Mr. Crack. Mr. Crack. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Mr. Sergio. Mr. Sergio. Mr. Morrow. Mr. Morrow. Ms. Jassy. Ms. Jassy. Mr. Del Duca. Mr. Del Duca. Ms. Darmerla. Ms. Darmerla. Ms. Wong. Ms. Wong. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Dong. Mr. Dong. Mr. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Koala. Ms. Koala. Ms. Molly. Ms. Molly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. McGarry. Mrs. McGarry. Mrs. McMahon. Mrs. McMahon. Mr. Milchin. Mr. Milchin. Mrs. Nidu Harris. Mrs. Nidu Harris. Mr. Potts. Mr. Potts. Mr. Rinaldi. 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 All those opposed, please rise one at a time. Be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Arna. Mr. Arna. Mr. Hardeman. Mr. Hardeman. Mr. McLeod. Mr. McLeod. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Miller Perry San Muskoka. Mr. Miller Perry San Muskoka. Ms. Scott. Ms. Scott. Ms. Thompson. Ms. Thompson. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mrs. Monroe. Mrs. Monroe. Mr. Urick. Mr. Urick. Mr. Mr. McLaren. Mr. McLaren. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Ms. Marteau. Ms. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Pettipiece. Mr. Pettipiece. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Mr. Singh. Mr. Singh. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Vantoff. Mr. Vantoff. Mr. Tabin. Mr. Tabin. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Thompson. Ms. Thompson. Mr. Navishak. Uh, sorry, Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Natasha. Mr. Natasha. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Madame Jelena. Madame Jelena. Ms. Forrester. Ms. Forrester. Ms. Shamanta. Ms. Shamanta. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. Ms. French. Ms. French. The ayes are 53, the nays are 40. The ayes being 53 and the nays being 40, I declare the motion carried. Second reading of the bill, deuxième lecture de projet de loi. Pursuant to the order of the House dated November 26, 2015, the bill is ordered referred to the Standing Committee on Finance and Economic Affairs. We have a deferred vote on the motion of third reading of Bill 113, an act respecting police record checks. Call on the members. This will be a five-minute bill. I can't proceed until you're in your seat. Thank you. On November the 30th, 2015, Mr. Balkinson moved third reading of Bill 113. All those in favor, please rise one at a time be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Nackley. 
Mr. Nackby. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Shirelli. Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor. Mr. Souza. Mr. Souza. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Hoskins. Ms. Sandals. Ms. Sandals. Mr. Dugan. Mr. Dugan. Ms. McCharles. Ms. McCharles. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Mr. Takar. Mr. Takar. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Orzetti. Mr. Orzetti. Mr. Gravel. Mr. Gravel. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Leal. Mr. Leal. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Zimmer. Mr. Zimmer. Madame Lalonde. Madame Lalonde. Mr. Quadri. Mr. Quadri. Mr. Balkis. Mr. Balkis. Ms. Albanese. Ms. Albanese. Ms. Manga. Ms. Manga. Mr. Pratt. Mr. Pratt. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Mr. Sergio. Mr. Sergio. Mr. Morrow. Mr. Morrow. Ms. Jassen. Ms. Jassen. Mr. Del Duca. Mr. Del Duca. Ms. Darmerla. Ms. Darmerla. Ms. Wong. Ms. Wong. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Dong. Mr. Dong. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Koala. Ms. Koala. Ms. Molly. Ms. Molly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. McGarry. Mrs. McGarry. Mrs. McMahon. Mrs. McMahon. Mr. Milchin. Mr. Milchin. Ms. Naidu. Ms. Naidu Harris. Mr. Potts. Mr. Potts. Mr. Rinaldi. Mr. Rinaldi. Mr. Rinaldi. Mr. Neal. Mr. Tebow. Mr. Tebow. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Arnold. Mr. Arnott. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Hardiman. Ms. McLeod. Ms. McLeod. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Ms. Scott. Ms. Scott. Ms. Thompson. Ms. Thompson. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mrs. Monroe. Mrs. Monroe. Mr. Urick. Mr. Urick. Mr. McLaren. Mr. McLaren. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Ms. Marteau. Ms. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Pettipiece. Mr. Pettipiece. Ms. French. Ms. French. Mr. Singh. Mr. Singh. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Vantal. Mr. Vantal. Mr. Tabbins. Mr. Tabbins. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Nadisha. Mr. Nadisha. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Madame Gelina. Madame Gelina. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Forster. Ms. Forster. Mr. Chamanta. Mr. Chamanta. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. All those opposed, please rise one at a time. Be recognized by the clerk. The ayes being 93 and the nays being zero, I declare the motion carried. Third reading of the bill, troisième lecture, projet de loi. Be it resolved that the bill do now pass and be entitled as in the motion. We have a deferred vote on the motion of third reading, Bill 112, an act to amend the uh, Energy Consumer Protection Act 2010 and the Ontario Energy Board Act 1998. Call on the members. This will be a five-minute bill. On November 26, 2015, Mr. Delaney moved third reading of Bill 112. All those in favour, please rise one at a time be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Nackley. Mr. Nackley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Madame Mayor. Madame Mayor. Mr. Souza. Mr. Souza. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Hoskins. Ms. Sandals. Ms. Sandals. Mr. Dugan. Mr. Dugan. Ms. McCharles. Ms. McCharles. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Mr. Takar. Mr. Takar. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Orzetti. Mr. Orzetti. Mr. Gravel. Mr. Gravel. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Leal. Mr. Leal. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Zimmer. Mr. Zimmer. Madame Lalonde. Madame Lalonde. Mr. Quadri. Mr. Quadri. Mr. Balkas. Mr. Balkas. Mr. Albany. Ms. Albanese. Ms. Manga. Ms. Manga. Mr. Pratt. Mr. Pratt. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Mr. Sergio. Mr. Sergio. Mr. Morrow. Mr. Morrow. Ms. Jassen. Ms. Jassen. Mr. Del Duca. Mr. Del Duca. Ms. Domerle. Ms. Domerle. Ms. Wong. Ms. Wong. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Dong. Mr. Dong. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Mr. Koala. Ms. Koala. Ms. Molly. Ms. Molly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. McGarry. Mrs. McGarry. Mrs. McMahon. Mrs. McMahon. Mr. Milchin. Mr. Milchin. Ms. Naidu Harris. Ms. Naidu Harris. Mr. Potts. Mr. Potts. Mr. Rinaldi. Mr. Rinaldi. Mr. Rinaldi. Mr. Tebow. Mr. Tebow. 
Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Arnie. Mr. Arnie. Mr. Hardy. Mr. Hardy. Mr. McLeod. Mr. McLeod. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Ms. Scott. Ms. Scott. Ms. Thompson. Ms. Thompson. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mrs. Monroe. Mrs. Monroe. Mr. Europe. Mr. Europe. Mr. McLaren. Mr. McLaren. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Ms. Marteau. Ms. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Pettit. Mr. Pettipiece. All those opposed, please rise one at a time to be recognized by the court. Mr. Tab. Mr. Tab. Mr. Singh. Mr. Singh. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Vanta. Mr. Vanta. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Natasha. Mr. Natasha. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Madame Jelina. Madame Jelina. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Forster. Ms. Forster. Mr. Shamanta. Mr. Shamanta. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. Ms. French. Ms. French. The eyes are 77, the nays are 16. The eyes being 77 and the nays being 16, I declare the motion carried. Third reading of the bill, troisième lecture du projet de loi. Be it resolved that the bill do now pass and be entitled as in the motion. We have a deferred vote on the motion of third reading of Bill 85, an act to strengthen and improve government by amending or repealing various acts. Call in the members. This will be a five-minute bill. On November 30th, 2015, Mr. Bradley moved third reading of Bill 85. All those in favour, please rise one at a time. Be recognized by the clerk. Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor. Mr. Nackby. Mr. Nackby. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Souza. Mr. Souza. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Hoskins. Ms. Sandals. Ms. Sandals. Mr. Dugan. Mr. Dugan. Ms. McCharles. Ms. McCharles. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Mr. Takar. Mm -hmm. Mr. Takar. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Orzetti. Mr. Orzetti. Mr. Gravel. Mr. Gravel. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Leo. Mr. Leo. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Zimmer. Mr. Zimmer. Madame Lalonde. Madame Lalonde. Mr. Quadri. Mr. Quadri. Mr. Balkas. Mr. Balkas. Mr. Albanese. Mr. Albanese. Mr. Manga. Ms. Manga. Mr. Pratt. Mr. Pratt. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Mr. Sergio. Mr. Sergio. Mr. Moro. Mr. Moro. Ms. Jass. Ms. Jass. Mr. Del Duca. Mr. Del Duca. Ms. Domerla. Ms. Domerla. Ms. Wong. Ms. Wong. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Dong. Mr. Dong. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Koala. Ms. Koala. Ms. Molly. Ms. Molly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. McGarry. Mrs. McGarry. Ms. McMahon. Ms. McMahon. Mr. Milch. Mr. Milch. Ms. Naidu Harris. Ms. Naidu Harris. Mr. Potts. Mr. Potts. Mr. Rinaldi. Mr. Rinaldi. Mr. Vernil. Mr. Vernil. Mr. Tebow. Mr. Tebow. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Arnold. Mr. Arnold. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. McLeod. Mr. McLeod. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Ms. Scott. Ms. Scott. Ms. Thompson. Ms. Thompson. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mrs. Monroe. Mrs. Monroe. Mr. Urick. Mr. Urick. Mr. McLaren. Mr. McLaren. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Ms. Marteau. Ms. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Pettipiece. Mr. Pettipiece. Mr. Singh. Mr. Singh. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Vanta. Mr. Vanta. Mr. Tavis. Mr. Tavis. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Natasha. Mr. Natasha. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Madame Jelena. Madame Jelena. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Forster. Ms. Forster. Mr. Shamanta. Mr. Shamanta. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. Ms. French. Ms. French.
All those opposed, please rise one at a time to be recognized by the clerk. The ayes are 93, the nays are zero. The ayes being 93 and the nays being zero, I declare the motion carried. Bill, troisième lecture de projet de loi. Bill, you now pass and be entitled as in the motion. We have a deferred vote on the motion for second reading of Bill 135, an act to amend several statutes and revoke several regulations in relation to energy conservation and long-term energy planning. Call in the members. This will be a five-minute bell. On November 3, 2015, Mr. Sorelli moved that second reading of Bill 135, an act to amend several statutes and revoke several regulations in relation to energy conservation and long-term energy planning. All those in favour, please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Sorelli. Mr. Sorelli. Mr. Nackley. Mr. Nackley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Souza. Mr. Souza. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Hoskins. Ms. Sandals. Ms. Sandals. Mr. Duga. Mr. Duga. Mr. McCharles. Mr. McCharles. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Mr. Takar. Mr. Takar. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Orzetti. Mr. Gravel. Mr. Gravel. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Leal. Mr. Leal. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Zimmer. Mr. Zimmer. Madame Lalonde. Madame Lalonde. Mr. Quadri. Mr. Quadri. Mr. Balkas. Mr. Balkas. Mr. Albanese. Ms. Albanese. Mr. Manga. Ms. Manga. Mr. Crack. Mr. Crack. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Mr. Sergio. Mr. Sergio. Mr. Morrow. Mr. Morrow. Ms. Jass. Ms. Jass. Mr. Del Duca. Mr. Del Duca. Ms. Dommer. Ms. Dommer. Ms. Wong. Ms. Wong. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Dong. Mr. Dong. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Koala. Ms. Koala. Ms. Molly. Ms. Molly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. McGarry. Mrs. McGarry. Mrs. McMahon. Mrs. McMahon. Mr. Milton. Mr. Milton. Mrs. Nidu Harris. Mrs. Nidu Harris. Mr. Potts. Mr. Potts. Mr. Rinaldi. Mr. Rinaldi. Mrs. Reneal. Mrs. Reneal. Mr. Tebow. Mr. Tebow. All those opposed, please rise one at a time. Be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Arna. Mr. Arna. Mr. Hardeman. Mr. Hardeman. Ms. McLeod. Ms. McLeod. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Ms. Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Hilliard. Mr. Hilliard. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Ms. Scott. Ms. Scott. Ms. Thompson. Ms. Thompson. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mrs. Monroe. Mrs. Monroe. Mr. Yurick. Mr. Yurick. Mr. McLaren. Mr. McLaren. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Marteau. Mr. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Pettipiece. Mr. Pettipiece. Mr. Tabbins. Mr. Tabbins. Mr. Singh. Mr. Singh. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Mr. Should be song. Should be song. Mr. Na Mr. Bantal. Mr. Bantal. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Natasha. Mr. Natasha. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Madame Jelena. Madame Jelena. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Forrester. Ms. Forrester. Mr. Mr. Monta. Mr. Monta. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. Ms. French. Ms. French. The ayes are 53, the nays are 40. The ayes being 53 and the nays being 40, I declare the motion carried. Second reading of the bill, deuxième lecture, projet de loi. Shall the bill be ordered for third reading? The Minister of Energy. Speaker, I refer Bill 135 to the Standing Committee on General Government. Ordered. 
just before we dismiss, I just want to give everyone, all members, uh, when the process of voting is taking place, you are to remain in your place. You are not supposed to get out of your place at all for any reason. Thank you. There are no defer, further deferred votes. This House stands recessed until uh, 3 p.m. this afternoon.